Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Love Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. So today we got something really special, something I like to consider my favorite truck of all time. This here is a 2002 Ford SVT Lightning F-150. This has got the V8 5.4 liter supercharged engine. Now this truck here dominated every other truck in its era as far as performance wise goes, maybe not towing capabilities and all that, but uh, the cool factor, the power, the acceleration, quarter mile times, all of that kind of stuff, this truck, nothing could beat it. Not to mention this vehicle, especially in this color, has pretty much been cemented in pop culture history in movies like The Fast and the Furious. I like the tuna here. Bullshit, asshole. No one likes a tuna here. Yeah, well, I do. Watch your back. Watch your back. Watch your back. So you guys can easily see why I love this truck. Now, this particular truck and I do have a history. Uh, about two years ago, this thing came into my shop and we did a full build on it. And when I say we built the motor from the ground up, we built the motor from the ground up. Uh, there's actually a really interesting story behind this. If you guys have a moment, let me tell you. So a friend of mine, his brother actually bought this thing originally from an auction. And the funny thing is, well, it's not funny. It's kind of unfortunate, but I guess at the auction house, they let him start it up and rev it and the engine sounded fine. But after he won it on the ride home, uh, I guess the engine blew up. Uh, he said that a connecting rod came out of the side of the block. So he was stuck, unfortunately, with a truck that had a bad motor, um, but he didn't want to waste any time. So he bit the bullet. He went ahead and bought a remanufactured short block from Ford which you guys can guess was pretty expensive. I think he spent maybe around $4,000 for it. Um, so he took the truck to a shop and I guess at the shop, I'm not sure what happened, but the truck sat there for over a year where they had the engine disassembled. He had the short block, uh, the brand new one or the remanufactured short block from Ford sitting in the bed of the truck. And so they had it at the shop for over a year. And I guess him and the shop had a disagreement and so he decided to just go ahead and pick up his truck. Uh, but when he went to pick up the truck, uh, the cylinder heads were actually missing. I'm not sure how that happened, but the shop says that they lost the cylinder heads. Uh, but anyway, they went ahead and threw all the parts in the back of the truck, the supercharger, all of the pulleys, all the stuff. They threw it all on the back of the truck and he towed it to a storage lot where the truck continued to sit for, I believe, another two years. And when I say this thing was at a storage facility, it was not parked inside or in a garage. It was parked outside where it was exposed to all of the elements, the rain. So as you can imagine, everything that was in the back of the truck, including the short block that he paid $4,000 for, was completely rusted. Anyway, I saw the truck and, you know, I thought how unfortunate it was to just see it sitting there and I, you know, I made a deal with him. I was like, hey, look, for a reasonable price, man, I can get your truck back up and running. So this is where I came into the picture. He went ahead and had the truck towed over to the shop. And like I said, all of the parts, the engine parts were sitting in the back of the truck. They were all completely rusted. All of the pulleys, the alternator. Luckily, they were smart enough to put the supercharger inside of the truck so the supercharger didn't get damaged. Uh, but like I said, the engine block, the remanufactured engine block was still sitting back here and it was full of water. So as you can imagine, the engine block was completely rusted and seized up whenever we got it. Not to mention, there was no engine in the truck. Half of the bolts were missing. All we had was a short block that was rusted solid and a bunch of random parts sitting in the back of the truck. So we literally had to piece everything back together. The rusted block, we ended up uh, actually being able to unseize it uh, by soaking it in CLR for a couple days. Uh, but, you know, once we got everything unseized, we found that the crankshaft had a lot of pitting on the surfaces. So we did have to have the crankshaft machined. Uh, after machining the crankshaft, we went ahead and re-owned the cylinder walls. We got the block cleaned up. We got the whole rotating assembly back together. We did have to source some new cylinder heads because, like I said, for some reason, the previous shop supposedly lost the cylinder head. So I'm not sure what happened there. After weeks and weeks of trying to piece everything together, so like I said, we didn't have any bolts. We actually had to go to the salvage yard and find a Ford F-150, just a regular truck, and pull all of the timing cover bolts off of that truck and pull a lot of the other bolts, like the power steering pump bolts, 
alternator bolts, all those bolts, we had to pull them off of another truck at a salvage yard. So there was a lot of time going into this truck to piece everything back together. I really wish that I had made a video or video series on building this truck, but at the time, um, my YouTube channel really wasn't my main thing. I was really more focused on doing the work that we had there at the shop. So no, unfortunately, I did not make any videos. I do have a short clip of something that I did shoot while we were putting the engine together. Let me show you real quick. And over here, we're finally getting the motor back together for the Lightning. As you can see, we got the long tube headers on it. The uh, supercharger reported it yesterday. Kind of got it mocked up here's the other piece that's going to go on there which is the nose piece of this so it's powder coated to match the uh the truck and also coated the uh lower intake manifold and a customer went ahead and picked up some stage two comp cams and some springs and retainers right here we're gonna go ahead and get that put back together Pull the timing cover off. Everything's just kind of mocked up right now. As you guys can see, a lot of work and a lot of time, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into getting this truck back up and running, but we finally did it. And I think at the dyno, it pulled somewhere around 440 horsepower to the rear wheels, which was awesome. So the owner was super happy that he finally had his truck back up and running. Now, fast forward two years later, the truck is here in my garage because we do have some problems that have popped up, but we're gonna get to those in a minute. They really don't have anything to do with the build. Uh, it's just that this truck really was the guy's daily driver. I mean, he put miles on this thing, drove it every day. You guys notice how dirty the engine bay is. Uh, you can tell that this is a daily driven vehicle and it's driven pretty hard. Uh, anyway, the guy told me that uh, one day while he was driving it, the uh, heater hoses, the little plastic connectors, if you guys are familiar with the Fords, these plastic connectors on the heater hoses, well, one of them cracked. Let me show you real quick. I don't know how visible this is gonna be, but if you take a look at these heater hoses where they go to the firewall, uh, they have these plastic connectors where they connect at the heater core. And one of them cracked while he was driving it. He said it lost all of the coolant. He overheated the engine and he's pretty certain that he ended up blowing a head gasket. At least that's what he's telling me. So here we are now trying to determine whether or not a blown head gasket is what we're dealing with. I'm thinking it's highly likely, but there are some tests that we want to do before we go ahead and say, let's start disassembling this engine, pulling the cylinder heads off. It's a lot of work to replace the head gaskets on this truck. So we want to be sure that that is what we're dealing with. So now that you guys are all caught up, let's go ahead and get started troubleshooting this engine. So let me take you guys inside and show you uh, one of the first things that I noticed about the truck when it came in. I've got the key in my hand right here. I'm going to go ahead and start this thing up. Um, first thing I noticed is that sometimes it does have a pretty extended crank. Let's see if this thing starts right up or not. And you see it kind of died out right there. Let me go ahead and try it again.
it does not want to start so i'm going to go ahead and put my foot on the accelerator a little bit here and give it a little bit of uh, gas try to hold the accelerator open a little bit here I'm gonna let off the accelerator and it stalled out. So as you guys can see, it's having some trouble idling. Uh, but what I noticed is that our check engine light was on. So let me take you guys over to the scan tool and show you what we got. All right, so moving over to the scan tool. Uh, what we're using today is the Launch X431 Pro 3S. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and go to PCM here and let's see if we have any codes. Let's go to read fault codes, retrieve continuous memory data trouble codes. There we have it. We have three different codes up here at the top. We have this P1299 cylinder head over temperature protection active. Uh, so this does mean that at one point in time, the engine did overheat. Take a look at our second code. We have a PO316 misfire detected at startup. And then we have a PO306, which is misfire detected in cylinder number six. Uh, so it looks like we have a specific cylinder number six misfire. Now, what we could also do is go back out here and find the special functions test for the power balance right up here. This is our power balance test. This is going to help us identify what cylinders are misfiring. Now the engine does have to be running in order for us to check this. So let me start this thing up real quick. All right, so we've got the idle pretty stable right now. Let's go ahead and check out the scan tool. Let's go ahead and hit okay. You guys can see that we definitely have a dropout happening here on cylinder number six pretty much a dead misfire so that is something we do want to focus on all right guys so with our misfire on cylinder number six i really wanted to go ahead and pull the spark plug out because i wanted to inspect it and see if maybe there was any sign of the spark plug being wet or fouled because again we are really concerned about having a blown head gasket so let me show you guys what i found when i took the spark plug out okay so here we have our spark plug for our cylinder number six take a look at that it is pretty fouled out. It is dirty, wet, and it definitely smells like antifreeze. So I was pretty confident that we had coolant getting into our cylinder number six. Let me show you guys what my next test was. Over here, I have my pressure tester. It is connected to the reservoir and the system is pressurized. Over here, I have my boroscope camera and I have it going into the cylinder number six. Let me show you guys what I found. All right, so we're moving into the spark plug hole. You guys can see we have one of the valves open. And if you take a look, we got some liquid down here. It looks like maybe some antifreeze. The other thing you'll notice is the top of the piston looks really clean, like it's been steam cleaned. Obviously from the antifreeze or coolant burning in the cylinder let's get a sideways view of this all right so we're looking at the cylinder from the side and take a look at where the cylinder head meets the uh, block we'll see if we can get a good visual right there take a look at our head gasket leak you guys can see where the coolant is coming from that is where the cylinder head meets the engine block so 100% we definitely have a blown head gasket. Okay guys, so there we have it. Hard evidence that we have a blown head gasket. I mean, at least that's what it looks like from what we see. It is still possible that, you know, we could have a crack in the cylinder head, but that's something that we won't know until we take it apart and do a visual inspection on the cylinder head. But at this point, there's no way around it. These cylinder heads have to come out so we can replace these head gaskets. I've already talked to the owner of the vehicle. He wants to get it done. He doesn't want this truck sitting for too long. He's already given us the green light. Let's get to work.
All right, guys, so there you have it. We managed to get one of the cylinder heads off. This here is our main culprit where we had our number six cylinder misfire. I'm still gonna go ahead and pull the head off of the other side because of course, if we're gonna be replacing head gaskets, we may as well do both at the same time. In the next video, we're going to be cleaning these cylinder heads up. We're gonna measure the surface for flatness using a straight edge and a feeler gauge. And if we find that we need to take these things to a machine shop, well, that's just the way it has to go. Anyways, like I always say, I hope you found the video useful. I hope you found it educational, informational, entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.